Would you like to be able to find and fix all of the most common bank reconciliation mistakes? Well, then all you have to do is watch this video and follow along with us. And by the time you're finished, there will not be any bank reconciliation problem that you cannot solve. Now you may well ask, how does Mark, your teacher, even know what the world's most common bank reconciliation mistakes are? Well, I can tell you, I've helped hundreds and hundreds of different types of companies fix their bank reconciliation mistakes. And I can tell you from experience that at this point, I can quickly glance at a bank statement glance at the reconciliation window and almost immediately know what the problem is. And at some point, you'll have enough experience to be able to do that as well. But the second reason why I'm absolutely sure that I'm giving you all the information you need is because I have had thousands and thousands of QuickBooks students over the years and some of them had actually worked doing exclusively bank reconciliation for large companies for many years. Those students shared with the rest of the class all of their bank reconciliation experiences and they were the ones who confirmed with me what the most common mistakes are. So you're getting the benefit of not only Mark's experience, but the experience of all the people Mark taught QuickBooks to who actually have done only bank reconciliation for many, many years. Now I've broken down this video into two categories. Mistakes that your eyes can easily see and recognize when they look at the bank statement and the reconciliation window, or mistakes that your eyes cannot immediately see that you can only know from experience or watching this video. And there are a total of five common mistakes that we are going to learn about right here so you will always be ready to find them and fix them. Now the first mistake that your eyes should be able to see if you're doing your bank reconciliation carefully is a transposed number. That means two digits that were typed into the money amount field were accidentally switched in position as the data entry person typed in that transaction. And my students told me from their experience that the bank is just as likely to make that mistake as you are. The second most likely mistake that your eyes can see just by looking are the two numbers in the very last columns next to the decimal point, the change column. Those two numbers are often wrong and we don't know why those two numbers on the end are the most likely to be either neglected or typed in the wrong way. But if you have a reconciliation that's only off by a few cents, it's probably that particular mistake. And again, if you're looking closely at your bank statement and your bank reconciliation window, you should be able to find those two numbers in the change column. And the last common mistake that your eyes will recognize if you're watching carefully when you reconcile are a transposed number between the money amount and the transaction number field. That means you put the check number in the money amount field and put the money amount in the check number field. Now, this mistake is not quite as common as the two previous mistakes I just mentioned, but it does happen. And it is something you have to be looking out for if you're noticing big differences or you have a big difference when you finish. Now I'm going to give you a chance to find those mistakes on your own. I've created two different April bank statements, one that's right and one that's wrong. So go ahead and open the statement that says April wrong. 
See if you can pause this video, try reconciling April yourself, and see if your eyes can identify those three specific mistakes that I just mentioned. And if you have trouble finding them, don't worry, because I'm about to show you where they are and what to do right now. So go ahead and open the bank statement that says April wrong. You can see it's the tab down here where it says April wrong. And see if you can go ahead and reconcile April by yourself with just the knowledge we learned so far. You will notice the three mistakes that I just mentioned. So I'm going to pause the video and give you a moment to try it and see if you can find those mistakes. And if not, I will point them out now. So the first mistake you should have found when going through everything one by one is right here on row eight. You see, in the wrong bank statement, we accidentally put check number 30 for the money amount of $19, when in fact our records say that it's actually check 19 for $30. So this is an example of someone who did the data entry at the bank who transposed the money amount and check number. And that should have jumped right out at your eyes as the first mistake that your eyes can find. So the next mistake is down here in row 14. You see row 14 says that check number 63 was for $350.35. When in fact, check number 63 is only for $350. So somehow the data entry person at the bank accidentally added the 35 in the change column when it should not be there. Remember, that change column can be very tricky. So if you're looking at everything carefully, you double check any number next to the decimal point and we can see that you would have a 35 cent difference at the end if you did not notice this second mistake right here on row number 14. And the last mistake that was planted on this statement was down here in row number 22. The check to Candy Charles was a refund check and we recorded it as 1200 but the bank recorded it as 2100 So check number 20 is a perfect example of a transposed number. And you would not have noticed that unless you went one by one doing bank reconciliation. If you didn't notice that, it means the bank just basically stole the difference between the 2100 that they lowered your balance by and the 1200 that you actually gave to Candy. So this highlights why it's so very important for you to do bank reconciliation at the end of each month. So go ahead and open up the corrected April statement and let's do the correct April bank reconciliation one by one together. Now, because this is already our fourth reconciliation that we're doing together, I'm going to move a little more quickly. However, you can still pause the video or make the speed slower by controlling the settings right below the video. So we know we start off with clicking at the cog wheel going over to the column of tools, oh, excuse me, going over to the column of tools and going down where it says reconcile. And again, the first thing that it asks for is the ending date and the ending balance. So we can easily find that at the bottom of the statement, 36,385.40. And don't forget the change column, 36,385.40. No problem. And of course, the statement date is what we would expect, April, but April 30th of 2025 in our little story. Now, these other transactions either don't exist or we assume we entered them during the month the modern way. So we can click Start Reconciling. Now here we are in the second window ready to mark things as cleared. And you can see we have the proper ending balance 
And the difference and the cleared balance are, of course, wrong because we put in the ending balance, but we did not mark the items as cleared yet. Now, I'm going to go much more quickly than I went in the three prior reconciliations that we did together because we already have some experience and I don't want to take up too much time repeating what we already learned. Remember, you can always control the speed of the video yourself by clicking in the settings below the video or just pause if you need to catch up. So, we'll start off the way we always do. We say this is the one we're looking for, so we highlight it. Then we jump back to QuickBooks Online and see if we found it. If we do, we mark it as cleared, come back, and then we highlight this with any of our favorite colors. You know, nothing too dark so we can still see it. Now, this is the one we're looking for, and these two have the same amount. So you have to be careful. Transaction number 18 for $30 is the one we're looking for. Transaction number 18 for $30. If we marked it as cleared, we indicate that on the statement by coloring it in. Transaction number 19, also to Chase Bank, almost seems identical. But it's also there, so we mark it off. And if we marked it off on the state uh, uh, in QuickBooks, we color it in in the statement. Now this $6,000 from Allen is now the one we're looking for. We now found it, so we marked it off. And to indicate on the statement that we marked it off, we color it in. Now here's what we learned before coming into play. We see that the order that transactions clear the bank is not always the same order on the bank statement. So we're looking for a $120 payment to Rex Repair, we have to scroll down and now mark that one as cleared as we come back to the statement and color it in. Now we're looking for check number 61 to Staples for $100. Do we see check 61 to Staples? Up, oh, I accidentally marked it off when I was off camera, but you can mark it off now. Okay, what are we looking for? We're looking, well, we color this in. Now we're looking for check number 62 for 250 to Rex Repair. So we see check number 62 for 250 to Rex Repair, mark it off, come back and color it in to indicate that it was marked off. We can look for check number 63 for $350. Here it is, check number 63, $350. We mark it in QuickBooks and we color it in in the statement. We're looking for check number 64 to UPS for $150. Check number 64 to UPS, $150. What about this next one here? Uh, well, we got a color in to indicate that we marked it off. What about a payment to Verizon for $895? Okay, so Verizon, $895. Okay, color it in as clear. What about $150 to UPS? Well, here it is, $150 to UPS. Okay, what about $4,300? Oh, whoa, we have to color in the ones we marked off in QuickBooks as cleared. Now highlight the $4,300 we're looking for. Here it is, mark it off. Once it's marked off, we color it in. What about the $400 to Rex Repair? Can we find that here? Okay, here it is. We mark it off. As Soon as it's marked off, we mark it as clear. What about $1,000 to Con Edison? Okay, okay, $1,000 Con Edison. So far, so good. See, we're almost finished. Mark it as clear. Then we do 833 to Staples. Is that here? Yes, it is. Mark it off. Okay. What about, oh, we got to color it in before we start looking for Reese's Repair Ranch for the $500. Now here it is, Reese's Repair Ranch, $500. Mark it off in QuickBooks and color it in in the statement. Now we're looking for candy, a $1,200 payment. We see it down here. We mark it off. 
Once we mark it off, we color it in in the statement to indicate that it was marked off in the bank statement. We're almost finished. We're bringing it home. Now we're looking for the 1700 for Verizon. Here it is, 1700 refund from Verizon. Color it in, okay? Looking for the 725 Staples, okay? Here it is, 725 Staples. Mark it off, color it in. We're looking for two, excuse me, 500 for, ah, this is the second to last transaction. So as soon as we mark off the second to last transaction, the difference should be equal to the very last transaction on the statement. And at the moment we mark off the very last transaction on the statement with the 450, aha, that's the moment the difference becomes zero. And you can clearly see that this $600 did not clear the bank in April, and that should show up on either the May or June's statement because you can see it was drawn at the end of the month. So we do not mark it off in QuickBooks Online because we did not find it on the statement. And at the moment the very last item was marked off the statement, that was the moment the difference became zero. We click Finish Now, click Done, and we could always view the reports if we want, or now that we know the common mistakes, we can move on to the next month's statement. And now we'll talk about mistakes that your eyes cannot readily see, but these two mistakes happen all the time. The most challenging mistake that you can encounter when doing bank reconciliation is marking the wrong check as cleared because it has the same money amount and possibly other similarities to another check that actually cleared. For example, let's imagine that check number 61 for $500 is the check that really did clear the bank in this month's reconciliation. However, let's pretend that you accidentally marked check number 75 as cleared instead of check number 61. Well, guess what? Your reconciliation for that month will still work. And it will still work because you marked off all the ones with the money amounts that are the same and the cleared balance relates to the money amounts, not the check numbers. So you will be able to finish that month's reconciliation without even knowing that you cleared the wrong check. So what's the problem? The problem is that one day the real check number 75 is going to clear the bank and show up on a future month's bank statement. You can't mark it as cleared because you already marked it as cleared in a prior reconciliation. So what do you do to fix this? Well, let's think about this situation. If in fact you marked the wrong one as cleared on a previous reconciliation, then there must be another check with the same amount sitting in your reconciliation window not marked as cleared that should have been. And if it's for an equal money amount, then that's the check that you would mark off as cleared instead. In other words, the first mistake was marking check 61 as cleared instead of check 75. So if then check number 75 does clear to even out your reconciliation on that month's statement where it shows up, just go and mark number 61 as cleared, and then the numbers and the money amounts will be the same. So that should not be difficult. Just find the one that you never marked as cleared before with the same money amount. It has to be still sitting in the reconciliation window because it hasn't been marked as cleared. So just go and mark the proper one as cleared and then you're able to finish the reconciliation. What would be the problem with that? The problem is that sometimes that particular check that you need to mark off 
to even out your reconciliation is difficult to find. So what do you do if you have several checks with the same money amount that still have not cleared or even a huge amount of uncleared checks of any amount that is just difficult for you to sift through. So I recommend two possible ways for you to ask your QuickBooks Online for a list of checks that never cleared. And when looking through this list, it should be much easier for you to find the specific check that you need to mark as cleared. Now, some people like to use the search tool. The search tool can give you a list of every single check in the exact amount of the check you're looking for. Unfortunately, the search tool cannot tell you which checks have cleared and which checks have not cleared. And unfortunately, the only window in QuickBooks Online that can tell you which checks have or have not cleared is the register window. So let's open the register window and figure out why. So here we have the search tool and we could simply type in the money amount and get a list of every transaction in that particular money amount. But what's great about the search tool is you can go to transaction search and then this way we're only looking for checks and only in the amount of 500. And this will help you isolate it further, hit enter. And you can see here all the checks in the same amount. Now, unfortunately, this window will not show you which ones did clear and which ones did not. But keeping this in mind or taking a screenshot of this for the list, you can then open the register window for this particular account and then ask QuickBooks Online for only the unreconciled transactions. So anyone on this list that's also showing up in the register will be candidates for you to see that one of those is one that you did not mark as cleared that you should have. So let's go ahead and click the cog wheel and go to the chart of accounts and in the row of the bank account you're working on we click view register. Now the register window has a filter icon in the top left and we can click the choices and we can choose to see everything that was not yet reconciled. So we click not reconcile and we click apply. And what we would do is we would look through the list of unreconciled transactions and see if any of them are the same as the list of checks for the same money amount that did not clear and we can see if there are any. Now there might be three of them, there might be four of them in the same amount that's marked as uncleared. Now in a small company that would be very unlikely and you should be able to find the check that you needed to clear but didn't and you should be able to find it pretty quickly by using both of these windows in the way that I just showed. But if there are many of them, you need to make a separate list and then bring that list of all potential checks that you should have marked as clear over to your bank account and you have to find it in your bank activity and ultimately find the check that did clear that you should have marked as clear. Now the great thing about a lot of these nice banks today is that they have a search tool within your bank account interface for you to search and find for checks of a particular amount or between particular dates. Now I don't endorse or condone any particular bank, but I love Chase and I've used Chase for decades and I will never leave them. And one of the reasons I love Chase Bank is because they give a very handy search tool for you to search on different criteria to find the particular checks that you're looking for. Now here we are logged in to my own personal Chase Bank account as an example. 
The first thing you may notice is that I'm very much less successful than most of the other accountants that you've probably met by looking at the balances of my checking account. But remember, we're here to search through particular transactions so we can find the one that did clear that we never marked as cleared so we can go ahead and mark it as cleared and fix the current month's reconciliation. And with most banks, you can click on the name of the account and get a list of every transaction that the bank recorded as cleared. But remember, we're looking for items of a particular money amount. Now, most banks, like Chase, have a lovely search tool that's very similar to the search tool in QuickBooks Online. And when you click it, you can isolate what you're looking for by typing in the different criteria. Now, I'm going to make it simple and just put in the money amount from this to that. But you can make it easier for yourself by adding criteria to filter down to the specific set of transactions that are the potential transactions that cleared the bank that you did not mark as clear. And when I click search, I should get a list of transactions that fit that description. And what you have to do is compare all of the transactions in your account interface from your bank that fit the description that you typed in and compare them to the list that you had in QuickBooks Online from the register window for items that cleared for that particular money amount. And the combination of those two things should help you easily find the one that did clear before that you never marked as cleared. And once you find the right one, just mark it as cleared and that will match the one that showed up that you had cleared in the past. So that's the most challenging mistake and these are the steps to fix it. And the last mistake we will discuss is really the most common and it's the easiest to fix. You simply forgot to record a check or a deposit and you find out about that when you look at the current statement. That is the most common mistake because people are doing business and they just assume the transaction was recorded when they're concentrating on doing business and not concentrating on their record keeping. That happens all the time. So if you look at the current month's statement and you notice transactions that are not in your QuickBooks Online, the most likely reason is that they are legitimate transactions that you never recorded. So then how can you record them? Well, it's very simple. All transactions listed on the statement have photocopies of their source documents either attached to the statement on extra pages or available for you to see when you log into your bank account interface. All you have to do is go back to the source document of whatever check, payment, or deposit showed up on the statement that you can't find in your QuickBooks Online records. If you identify the transaction that you did not record and look at the source document for that particular transaction, that will tell you if it's a legitimate transaction. And if it is a legitimate transaction, all you have to do is leave the reconciliation window go and record it properly the way you were supposed to, then come back to the reconciliation window and finish reconciling. So again, all you have to do if this happens, look at the back part of the statement to see if there is a photocopy of the check or the deposit that you found on the statement that you never saw in QuickBooks Online. If you don't have access to that particular deposit slip or check to verify it's legitimate, then you would contact the bank and tell them there's a problem. But I can tell you, well over 90% of the time, if you see something on the statement that you can't mark off in QuickBooks because you don't see it, you probably forgot to enter it. And you'll always be able to get to the source document 
to see what it is and if it's legitimate.